Speaker, uh, one of the things that uh, Kim Jeffries was talking about was taxes and where taxes are going to fit into all of this. Uh, you've called, I believe, for extending the tax cuts that were put in place under President Trump. You've probably seen the CBO uh, say that that cost uh, the taxpayers effectively $3.5 trillion in terms of adding to the debt. How does that dynamic uh, work in this context? Well, thanks for the question. First of all, there is not going to be a tax discussion in this debt ceiling. The president admitted that yesterday at the beginning. But let's literally talk about this, because this is a good topic you brought up. You know, if you look at the 50-year average of how much money government brings in, average, we usually bring in about 17 percent of GDP. Right now, we're almost at 20 percent of GDP bringing in. So what you find is only two other times in modern history have we ever been at this point, in 1944 and the year 2000. So you're actually not even bring, you're bringing in more than any other time. So the real problem is what we are spending. Normally, on a 50-year average, we spend about 21 percent of GDP. We're now over 23.6, on our way to 25 percent. So the problem is the spending level. And it's not just that the taxes are bringing in more money than anybody projected. The economy became stronger. We became more competitive. Companies came back to America instead of going to other countries. But what you really want to look at is what the Democrats passed last time. They called the inflation reduction. That's costing more than three times what they projected it would cost. We're watching the president claim that he cut the deficit by $1.7 trillion. He didn't do anything. Three programs ended from COVID. He actually increased the deficit by more than $500 billion of what he said it would be. So if you want to be apples to apples, we, it's very simple. We are spending more money uh, by a 50-year average than we actually bring in. For 21 straight years, we spent more than we brought in. No household would live this way, and no business or CEO that you interview every single day would continue this pattern. And that's all we're saying. Let's curve what we are spending less than we spent last year. Let's go back five months. Let's put in things that make us grow, right? Permitting reform. Cut the red tape. If you like renewable energy, be able to get the permit to do it. Build the roads. But also the other energy we talked about. Let's help people get jobs again. Let's be less dependent upon China. I think that's reasonable and sensible, but I didn't think it was reasonable that I had to wait 104 days until right. they finally admit they'd come Speaker, into the room and negotiate. To the extent yes. there are Democrats watching you right now, and to the extent you would want to talk to them if this is going to be a bipartisan deal, what do you say to the, to the, to the viewer who says, look, during the Trump administration, while you were in office, you did not push back on increasing the debt and the deficit? Well, I would tell you one thing. If you're talking about a debt ceiling negotiation, that's not true. President Trump negotiated with Nancy Pelosi. The difference was she argued to spend more money. We pushed back, and I think there's enough blame to go around with Republicans and Democrats. They all spent too much in the last 21 years. But you know what? There comes a moment in time when you hit the wall. We're now at a debt that we have as larger than an economy, more than 20 percent. We haven't seen this since World War II. And you can't continue down this trajectory if you want to continue to be the strongest nation in the world. You know, when you talk to the Defense Department, not this year, but years ago, they tell you the greatest threat to America is not Russia or China, it's the size of our debt. And this is a real concern. So I haven't sat down and said it has to be one way or no way. I simply asked the president, can we have a negotiation about it? Can we negotiate? Can we talk about it? You bring up your ideas, I'll bring up mine, and let's let the best idea at the end of the day win. I think whether you're Democrat, Independent, or Republican, you have this debate in your own household. So why can't we have this debate with the taxpayers' money as well? Mr. Speaker, I also see, and both sides have, have completely different memories about previous debt ceiling uh, negotiations and whether there were negotiations, whether there's a clean debt bill or not. But one thing that that keeps coming back to me is it's been posited that, posited that there has never been this type of uh, brinkmanship or leverage that the Democrats have never said we will not raise the debt ceiling uh, uh, if you don't do what we want to do. That that's never, this is unprecedented. It's never been done before and it would set a bad precedent. Is that true, number one, it's never been done? And do you worry that the next time the shoe's on the other foot? Uh, that the Democrats will say, hey, we're able to do this. You, you did it in, in 2023. No, we've watched all the times before. Some of the best legislation we've got where we can curve spending 
came with the debt ceiling negotiations. You can sit back and you could watch the comment Schumer made or Nancy Pelosi made. Both sides of the aisle have talked about this. But we have divided government. And, you know, the founders has devised our government where the House passes the bill, the Senate passes the bill, and you go to conference. Unfortunately, in this situation, only the House has passed the bill. So there's no conference to go to. But when you have a president that simply says, I will not negotiate with you, you have to have a clean debt ceiling, or there's no way we can go forward, that's not what the American people ask for, and that's not the way our government is designed. Look, I believe, just in business every day, different opinions can get together, come to an agreement where both sides feel they win. I've been asking for that from day one. Let's get into the room, let's have a negotiation, and let's walk out where the American people win. Let's limit our ability to continue to spend yeah. crazily in the future years. Let's oh. save money that has been wasted, and let's grow our economy and make us stronger again. I, I don't guess think it it's that difficult.